So, but let's say that we eat matzah and we eat murder. We eat matzah, zeichel le'geula. Why do we need eat murder, zeichel le'avdus? Rabbi Yankov Emden explains the four kashas. Four kashas boil down to one fundamental question. Four which are one. And the child wants to understand, Father, what are we supposed to remember this magnificent night? Avdus or Chedus? Exile or redemption? Golas or Geula? On one hand, we eat matzah, which is a zeichel a cherus. We eat moro, which is a zeichel a avdus. Matzah itself is a zeichel a geula. Lo hisbeg betzikam shel avosein or hachmetz. The other hand, it's lechem oini. Ha lachma anya da achla av hatana. We start off the seder. And our response to our child is, we are supposed to remember both avdus and cherus. And why is that? The Zayr HaKadosh says, only a slave really appreciates freedom. A person that never knew bondage and never knew slavery, how would he know to appreciate freedom? And only one that was terrorized by the darkness of night would appreciate sunrise. And that is why it is only if we remember Golas that we really will be thankful and appreciative of Geula. But I think it goes far beyond that. Rabbi Kiva ben Yosef taught us, I'll call Sora Shalai Tavoy, call the Ovin Rachmona Letav Ovin. Even when we suffer, we believe Kodesh Bochu loves us, he is with us, and it is all to the better. I heard from my great Rabbi, the Kloyser Magir Rabbi, why is it when we say Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokeinu Hashem Echol, we lift our hands and cover our eyes? So the source of this Aloha is a Gemara and Baruch Yud Gimel. Shechanoch says, we don't want to be distracted because Kavana is Ma'akev Pasek Rishon Shal Kriya Shema. But if that is the only reason, you could simply close your eyes or look into your sitter. Lifting your hand, covering your eyes seems to be a symbolic act. What is the message we want to convey? So the great Kloyzer Magarebi said, Shem is an Achamim, Shem Elokim is Midas Adin, as we all know from so many sources. And each and every one of us as an individual, and Klal Yisrael as a nation, we know better days and we know darker days. It's part of life. It's part of the cycle of life and especially the life of nations, and especially our people, Kalal Yisrael, Goylo Achal Goylo. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu. Kodesh Baruch has two names. Sometimes he appears, B'midas Alachamim, sometimes B'midas Adin. We cover our eyes and we say, Hashem Echod. Everything is Avaya, everything is Lachamim. Sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes it's impossible to see. And that is why we cover our eyes. Regardless of what we see, we believe and we try to feel Hashem Echod. Everything is Rachamim. Like the Ramban writes, Pashas v'zei sabroch ha'mi amino the eish das lo moi. In this posseg there's a side, midas adin klula berach. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem. So there's the magnificent story in Agodesh Shul Pesach of the greatest and all coming together Bebnei Barak. And it's a question that everybody asks. Why would they all leave their families, their Talmidim, their yeshivas and all come to Bnei Barak? And why Bnei Barak? Rabbi Kiva was the youngest of the Chabura. Rabbi Yezah and Rabbi Yeshua were the Rabbeim. Rabbi Kiva was a Talmud of Rabbi Yezah and Rabbi Yeshua. Instead of him going to them, why did they come to him to Bnei Barak? And Abtarfin was older than Abikiv. What brought them all to Bnei Barak? My feeling is, and I said this many times, my feeling is it's state of sense. Those were the dark days after Chorben Abayas. The base of Middash was destroyed. Kalalia saw it as shattered and broken. And the days of Abikiv, many still hope that Ben Koziva Bar Kochva will turn the tide. He still was fighting the Romans. And Rabbi Kiva believed he's the Mashiach. And in the days of Rabbi Kiva, the destruction was final. Beitar fell, Matzada fell, Bar Kochva was murdered, killed by the Romans. 
and a terrible depression descended on the people when they finally re- realized that this is horrible and we're going to exile. Everybody was shattered and broken. Whom do you turn to in days of darkness? Rabbi Kiva is the one. His motto was always called the Ovid Rahman al Ovid. All the Gedei Ladar come to Rabbi Kiva and they want to see how would his Seder look? No Korban Pesach, no Beis Migdash, dark exile, the dark curtains of exile were drawn. Everybody comes to learn from Rabbi Kiva, to derive Chizuk for Rabbi Kiva. He is the great teacher. He always sees Or Shabachoshech Varachamim Shabedin. And at the end of Masechet Marcus, when they see a Shual Yoytzim of his Kodesh Kodesh, and everybody starts, breaks down, crying. Rabbi Kiva Metzachek. That is what brought them to Bnei Barak, to see Rabbi Kiva's Seder night. And that is the secret of Shema Yisrael Hashem Echad. So my feeling is we eat Matzah to remember redemption. We eat Mora to remember Golas. And then we have Koireich, Matzah Vamora Biyachad, to teach us that matter, matzah and motor are not really so much different. And we could feel ta matzah in the motor. My dear friends, exactly 20 years ago, Tav Shin Samach Gil, the Leila Seda, it was the 27th of March. There was a terrible terror attack in the Park Hotel in Atania, in the middle of the Seder night. A bomb exploded. One of the worst terror attacks Israel has ever known. 30 people were killed, 160 were injured, in the middle of the Seder. And I spoke the first day of Chalamoid to hundreds of people. Nobody asked the question, but it was lingering in the air. It was blowing in the wind. It, the question didn't need to be asked. People come together to rejoice, to remember Yetzirah Mitzrayim, to remember Geula. And this is what happens in the middle of the Seder. Devastation, death, destruction, entire families torn asunder. Dam ve'eish ve'tim soshon in its most horrific form. So when I address the people, I told them a story. A story which I read in the Ghetto Kovno Diary and Shalas Echuvas Mima Maki. So let me give you a brief introduction to Mima Maki. Rabbi Fry Mashri was one of the Gedolim in America, a very, very special Talmud Chacham. And he was the major Talmud Chacham in Ghetto Kovno. There was no official Rav in the ghettos in those horrible ghettos. But all the Shilas came to Rav Oshri. In those circumstances, you didn't really have Svorim. Didn't even have paper. He scribbled his answers as chuvas on scrap paper and buried those pieces of paper under the lamppost of the barbed wire fence, hoping that if he will survive, he will salvage those little pieces of paper and use them as a basis to write lengthy chuvas discussing the horrific shyness that he was asked. He survived and he dug out those little pieces of paper and he printed five volumes Shalas Echuvas a masterpiece. So we learn the story of Moshe Goldkorn was the only chassid in the Kavno ghetto. How a chassid got there, I don't know. I don't know the story. So Rav Ashri tells the story, in the middle of the Seder night, there's a knock on the door. And in the ghetto, there was a knock on the door. You were terrified. Walks to the door, petrified, opens the door. And there stands Moshe Goldkorn, bruised, battered, hurt, his mouth oozing blood. And Rabbi Ashi asks Moshe Goldkorn, what happened? And Moshe tells him, I was baking out of Pesach matzahs because I'm a chassid. And that's our meaning every year. And a Nazi caught me. 
and with his big stick and whip he, he almost killed me he broke my teeth my mouth is bloody and I have a question to ask you and I try to imagine what runs through Rabbi Ashley's mind. Ay vey, what is he going to ask me? Tzadik v'raloi, Rosh v'toivloi, why do I deserve this? Why? I was just trying to be mekayim the mitzvahs and the meaning of my forefathers. So what did he ask? Moshe Goldkorn asks the rabbi, I never ate shruyo because I'm a chosid. But he broke all my teeth. I can't chew. I can't bite. So what should I do? Should I eat shruya? First time in my life? Or should I forego mitzvah's matzah? When I read the story and I read the question the first time, I was crying. And I don't know whether you realize I'm emotional right now and I have difficulty talking. And I say, what carried us through this terrible gullus is not our answers, but maybe our questions. Questions like the Moshe Goldkorn's questions. Kodesh Baruch has his ways, and Moshe Goldkorn didn't question a Kodesh Baruch Hu's ways. What troubled him was not, why? Why do I deserve this? Why did this happen? What he wants to know is what does a Kodesh Baruch Hu expects from me and what could I do for a Kodesh Baruch Hu? Should I eat Shruya or not? Not always do we have the answers. Sometimes we just cover our eyes and say, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We believe, we try to feel. The questions sometimes are more important than the answers. So whenever I tell the story, are you interested to know what Rabbi Ashri's answer was? I think the question is far more important than any answer. Okay, so the answer was, of course, eat shriya, because it's a mitzvah to say the oraisa. Better eat shriya than not eat matzah at all. But the question is far more inspiring than the answer. Not always do we have answers. But that is what Rabbi Kiva taught us. You cover your eyes. Hashem Echod. Called the Yovad Rechamon Elatavod. My father told us the story many times. Spending the Leila Seder in Mildorf in a Nazi labor camp. And the Kloisenberg Rebbe, my great Rebbe, the great Godel and Sadak, was worried a few weeks before Pesach was going to be with Matzis. And people laughed at him. What else do you want besides matzahs? Do you need Rabbeinu Tamstvil? And do you need a talus with a big Torah? What else do we expect to get? Forget it, people said. And he said, how will we have a Pesach without matzahs? Miracle of miracles. Two weeks before Pesach, there was an Allied bombardment. And they bombed the train station. And there was a Nazi train there, which was torn to shreds and a huge quantity of wheat was dispersed on the fields and those decimated Jews coming back from work every day picked up a few kernels of grain and brought them back into the machna and it was putting your life in jeopardy a day or two before Pesach the close of Maghreb and a small group of Mesiris Nefeshid and my father was one of them took some racks, crushed the grain, had some kemach, some flour, out of Pesach, took some water, put on a little fire, and they baked matzahs. There were 11 little matzahs, each one this big. My father was one of them. He got a little matzah. And Belayla say that he sat in total darkness, on their little matzahs. And the great, great Kloisen Begarebi quoted the entire Agoda from his memory from beginning to end, which very few people could do. Try to imagine the scene. They were in 
far worse circumstances than Golas Mitzrayim. What we learn in the Torah is, after leaving Mitzrayim, people sometimes long to go back there. Zachanu et ha'avatichim et ha'lamo hitzeisonu lahamas hitzeisonu b'midvor nobody that was in the Holocaust ever wanted to go back there. No one. No one of the millions. They were in far worse circumstances than our forefathers in Mitzrayim. So what did they have to rejoice about? But that is the Mesiris Nefesh of our people. Always. Anywhere. Everywhere. The Vekas and HaKadosh Baruch like Moshe Goldkorn, do I eat shruya or don't I eat matzah? Thanking Yekodesh Baruch Hu, covering your eyes and saying, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. That's the message of Koyrech. Matzah is Geula, Moror is Golos. Koyrech teaches that the Golos is a Mafteach Shel Geula. And even Midas Adin, is infused and part of Midas Arachamim. Let us hope that the Korab Yameinu we will see Kvoid Hashem Be'id Galia. Not Behesto, but Be'gilui. Ki ayin ba'ayin yiru b'shuv Hashem Tzioin v'niglo Kvoid Hashem. We should see Chazdei Shemayim Gluyim Be'chesed U'varachamim and in these glorious days of Geula, Benisa Nigalo, Benisa Nasidim, the Gaul HaKadosh Baruch Hu, should send Moshiach Zedkeinu, V'yivna lono beis mikdashenu v'sifartenu v'shom neichal, min ha-zvochim u'min ha-psochim sh'yagi adomam al kiyor ha-mesbeach, v'mheiro v'yomeinu omein. Akushon frei lachem pesach.